ladies and gentlemen, this is so scared and uh, we're going to do a cast of the game in Red Alert, of course. Well, it's not really of course, I'm going to cast uh, games on other maps uh, as well. But this uh, match I found on GameReplace.com and it's called, um, the title is called, it's a Global League practice match. This is between uh, Andre the Slav uh, and Adju. Uh, Andre the Slav is a um, currently a, a minions division player and uh, is uh, kind of in the midst uh, the, the field in that position. Anju is uh, currently in the Masters division and um, uh, does struggle a little bit against the more seasoned players there. But so, uh, well, it's uh, fair to say that this might be more or less a balanced matchup. Now we're going to play as both Soviet players, so we're going to have Andrew playing as Russia and Andrew the Slav is going to play as Ukraine. Now I'm, uh, this is on dual cold front, it's become one of the most uh, popular one versus one matches and uh, if you don't know why you'll see that in a moment. So here we go, uh, Henri is going to start to the bottom left as Ukraine as we just said and Andrew as Russia to the top right. Well, this map, one of the reasons uh, it has become very popular is that it kind of both panders to the um, to the field player uh, which kind of likes to just build an army and uh, move about looking for uh, weak spots and uh, yeah, trying to go for the map control but it also has the uh, possibility of kind of um, uh, digging down to a certain positions and try to make their way uh, into a lead and a win that way as you can uh, certainly uh, on some positions on the maps kind of uh, uh, lock down certain areas if you if you so chooses so uh, it kind of have options for both uh, both uh, kind of uh, the, the extremities of uh, the strategy so I'm kind of curious to see how these players are choosing to to take advantage of the battlefield here so we have Andrew uh, and Henri under the Slav as I will call him from now on, uh, just setting out spotters uh, infantry. The, the, some players tend to do that. Um, I I kind of like to see to if I can find a uh, small uh, small way into the base. But as you can see, oh, that was a dog. I guess that's oh yeah. That's look at that. That's uh, under the slab's dog. It's <laughs> actually occupying the barracks of Andrew right now, so Andrew's not going to get anything more out, but that doesn't necessarily have to mean a great big deal at the moment. But as I was getting to say, they're both kind of content to just uh, disallow the opponent to get any scout whatsoever. And that's fine, of course. Uh, some players tend to, uh, like I can sometimes, for example, I build like uh, maybe like three or four units in a group, and maybe like protect a uh, a couple of sides and this small group will just move around and maybe pick off uh, some spotters and maybe get one of them into the base to scout a little bit just to see if there's anything abnormal happening. There's the early APC for Anju uh, which is not an uh, uncommon uh, first unit out of the war factory. This will be able to get into the base of the opponent uh, with a one <laughs> pretty much 100% uh, certain. There's not really much we can do to stop that uh, hard uh, APC does have quite a bit of armor and currently it's going to try to block off the war factor a little bit. Now the reason the flame tower is set down there ooh, and uh, well, it does take a little bit of damage to that armor APC but see even after a shot from the flame tower the APC and the uh, rocket soldier still is going to just get out just fine as you can see there. So uh, but the reason the flame tower went down it was blocking the war factory there so that, that the APC would have been stopped for quite some time, uh, had he not uh, put down that uh, flame tower, the rocket soldiers could have been just picked off by that APC. So that was a that was a nice uh, <coughs> nice little play there uh, by uh, I guess both players then. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, that uh, flame tower there you know, uh, kind of uh, gives you a uh, rebate on that early APC instead of a second uh, early uh, harvester, which uh, some players are uh, opting for. Okay, so we see Andrew is uh, got uh, what, four harvesters here, and they already expanded to this position. There are um, some good reasons for this. Uh, certainly, do have the uh, ore patches here and here, but 
uh, thing is about this position here, if you build the refinery here, eventually it's going to find, himself, find itself uh, a long distance from the uh, ore mine, and also you have the trees kind of in the way, so if you can get to this position and uh, get the ore patch from this this way, and then you just later can go for this, and uh, even maybe for the gem mine later in the game, then that might just be the better strategy overall. As you can see here, uh, exemplified here, so the harvester is going to have a little bit of, uh, of uh, struggle to get to that ore. Now the downside of that is that he's not going to be able to build any defensive structures in his area should they need our eyes. But for the time being he seems to be content with what he's doing and has that extra APC to scout further. So he feels confident in, uh, in just uh, expanding early to get uh, a better position for your sorcerers. Going for the late game is uh, pretty much what he's doing. Um, uh, Andre the Slav is a little late on those uh, those uh, harvesters in comparison, despite uh, just staying put. Um, uh, but it's still doing fine, I guess, and we don't really see any kind of special tech for either players. And we see we see mobile stacks of Andrew, which is kind of a unit that you yeah, and APC. So he is. Mm, Looking to yeah just build something like yeah he gambles on his through his uh, strong economy and then maybe he just feels like he wants to build the uh, mobile flag the APC to just kind of be able to counter more or less anything that uh, could come his way. Doesn't really still uh, as in the previous game this is scout too much. He did the earlier scout but that didn't really tell him anything. This is a pretty standard setup. Oh, it's going to get hit again. Oh, see the service depot? That's actually pretty neat. And it's going to camp the, uh, the service depot for a while. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, failed APC uh, uh, drop there, but this APC is actually uh, doing its money's worth by <laughs> blocking the uh, ore refinery. Keep in mind that APC came in with a very low health bar, so that's a, that's a nice value out of that uh, APC. So both players are going for the service depot, and I'm um, pretty sure that what's going to come out of this building then is an MCD for Andrew. Possibly just getting getting it back to this position, defend his original base, or move out to get some uh, some additional uh, uh, expansions, of course. So here's the, uh, let's see. Well, the service depot here, uh, Andrew is doing the same thing, moving his original MCD and maybe moving his uh, next MCD back to the original spot. Here comes a push by uh, by Andrew, actually, which is uh, currently picking, uh, uh, oh, taking Andrew the Slav by surprise. He might actually be forced, yeah, he's gonna be forced to move back that MCD. There's a lot of flamethrowers in there, and flamethrowers, they will just eat through building armor. He's going to have to move that MCD now, uh, if he wants to save it. Uh, yes, there he goes, okay, so move it away. Problem is, this flag trucks will just try to hunt it down, so it's going to be lost anyway. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, well, it looks bad for Andre to be honest. Uh, here's the expansion for Andrew. What uh, Andre could do is build a. Um, well, there's this MCV, the second MCV. Uh, what he could do is just capture that MCV back, but it doesn't seem to have the army to um, to get back into action here. So it's just going to looks like straight up lose this game. And um, yeah, there's no, there's no really, re there's no really recourse here for uh, for on this lab. Andrew has been expanding as well, so you got the gem mine now. There's two gem mines on this map. There's uh, like one small, uh, well, there's one gem mine over here and one over here, which is kind of like in the middle of the map between players on the left and right side. Well, here's the uh, expansion uh, for. Uh, he's going to expand nevertheless, not giving up just yet. Uh, it's going to have to hold off this attack with the Tesla coil here with uh, some infantry here and there and might be able to take it down. If you can focus down the rocket soldiers, that's going to be very important. There's still one more here, which is actually doing the damage. And the yeah, air is going to come in here as well. Ooh, second MC. That's actually, yeah, that's uh, well, that's the best they can do actually. If you can somehow, st if you can stay alive here. Uh, without investing too much more into defenses, then uh, yeah, it's a uh, double MCV here, you know, could theoretically put him back into the game. Well, not theoretically, he could actually come back into the game. Well, there's... Ah, excuse me. Ah, never mind. Andrew is taking up to Raider Dome, and uh, under the Slav will not be able to take up anytime soon, because he's still going to have to 
redistribute his uh, ore trucks and his economy. So, so it looks like uh, he's uh, he's on the ropes. Heavy tanks for Andrew now, and yeah, he's just going to keep building heavy tanks. Now that he has, <laughs> he knows that he is far ahead. Third MCV for Andrew, this love. Well, why not? You know, when you're when you're behind, uh, like uh, under the slab here, why not just just gamble on uh, on just getting that extra production and expansions up? Oh, okay. So yeah, he's yeah. going to have to turn back. But I was going to say about Andrew's heavy tank build is that he knows that he's uh, he's well well ahead. Then he might as well just dominate the field with uh, an army consisting of um, well uh, having the heavy tanks as a pillar. Uh, of course, you don't want to have the heavy tanks uh, moving around uh, your opponent with no infantry. Okay, picking up that MC. So yeah, that's pretty much what Andrew's going to do. He's going to build an airfield though. It's Russia. Maybe it's just take. Maybe it's just taking up to the um, to the tech center and get you this shock. See, this is not what you want to do with heavy tanks. The thing is, yeah, taking down that uh, that, that thing. Oh. So, uh, well, I was going to say this is a distraction, but this is not going to do well either. Uh, so this heavy tank is... Like, in this situation, there's nothing for the heavy tanks to actually get. They shouldn't be able to take down anything. And should just be coming home to join up with uh, additional forces. Wow! <laughs> Andrew is actually floating like a madman, so... But, uh, uh, but he's not producing. Instead, he's just... Staying inside the base with the with the heavy tank against Andrew. Oh well, well I'm just going to take this opportunity to uh, to expand. Okay, so Andrew has all the money he can ever dream of, but he has no units, uh, which gives Andrew the opportunity to expand here again. And it does also have this uh, extra uh, base, which he could actually, you know what, he could actually get uh, started on this Gemini as well without uh, Andrew notice because he's not really, um, he's not really. Um, Scouting right now, no. So he's, uh, you know, the the the, the, f the four heavy tanks here. Of, of course, he didn't probably expect to lose that many infantry here, as there was the flame towers and flame throwers. So that's pretty pretty horrible. Probably expected to do more damage with this one, but still, when you have the heavy tanks, uh, when you see you can't really win an engagement, and I don't. I'm no expert in this. I, I waste my armies uh, all the time. But what you what you want to do, especially if there's just loner heavy tanks, if they're just loner heavy tanks, then pull them back, pull them back home. You have like four heavy tanks with um, with a value of like yeah, okay, four heavy tanks would be let's see, two thousand yeah, four thousand six hundred dollars or credits or monies is four heavy tanks. So that's they're pretty freaking expensive. So, yeah, and uh, you. Giving away that value will you know, give give your opponent the, the opportunity to get home. All right, uh, but this base was not scouted with the yak, and the Andrew should be able to just just kill off this base pretty quick. We got some V2s and the infantry. So well, it's gonna take some time. well if the, the heavy tank moves in front. Oh god, no. Oh no, but the uh, rocket soldiers here is. Uh, I should pull them back. Pull back the rocket soldiers. He's gonna need them. Oh, I'm just gonna buy the time and uh, move away his MCV. He's gonna move him back home and probably focus on this expansion. Well, that's kind of unfortunate for Henri the Slap. Oh, is there a Tesla coil coming up, maybe? Yeah, probably. There you go. Yeah, and <laughs> he's moving. He's just moving. Oh, nice. Took out that, uh, that V2. That's actually decent. It's gonna slow down this attack uh, even further. But! <laughs> oh, deploy! Deploy now! It's going to deploy now! Okay, never mind. This is dead. Oh, oh Jesus. I was, I was actually wondering. I was, uh, I was actually pretty close. Unfortunate. So, under the Slav does only have his, uh, his first expansion up. And yeah, it does produce a nice army here. So, unless he has, like, stellar army engagement. Well, like this one, actually. This is a... Uh, APC could have just crushed through there. Uh, and now the V2 can just load again. But if this... Oh! He's gonna have to move his heavy tanks forward. Yeah, pretty quickly. Kill off that V2. He's gonna kill off all of this. <gasps> That's pretty awkward. Oh, it's gonna lose a little bit too much, I feel. So, yeah, well, he did the damage. But it was... 
It was a nice academic engagement, but not, um, that not what he needed. He keeps producing, and uh, Andrew, for, you know, for his part, he got the axe, so he's gonna be able to scout everything. And lose his axe. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's gonna crash it into the blob. We Not too bad. But that's 4 yaks gone. And uh, speaking of the money, is 4 yaks. 1 yak costs 1350. 2007, 5400 in value. So, <laughs> what keeps on uh, with this love in the game is actually. <laughs> Actually, the waste of Andrew currently, and Andrew, ah, yeah, still, still high on money, so he can just he can do this for a long time, and uh, I suspect that eventually, Andrew will win by kind of just uh, depleting the uh, resources of Andrew the Slav. Although Andrew the Slav could just expand up here again. Ooh, nice pickup by Andrew. It's gonna pick up this one and uh, get home. This is what you want to do with the axe. Ah. Uh, don't want to lose the act. Okay, go home. Go home and... Okay, he's gonna scout with this. Okay, that's actually good. So he knows about this... Uh, poor... Yeah, this, this kind of vacant expansion. And then he's going here to crash into the blob. No? Wow, he's actually, he actually got away with that. Uh, that's actually a couple of rocket soldiers in there. So he's gonna get, go back home. Maybe just do some scout. If he bothers, he can repair it. But if you can see, uh, he still needs that extra expansion. He's just going to be uh, kind of... Draw, drawn out uh, to a very piss poor end game here if you can't expand. Andrew has that tech center, and uh, but I don't see an iron curtain. I don't see shock troopers. So, uh, but you know maybe it's, that's, that's what his, his strategy probably is. Even some Sam sites here now that you know that he's seen the axe being destroyed by uh, Andrew. It's probably figure, figuring out that Andrew is. Uh, can be a little bit sloppy with these attacks. So this attack is incoming, uh, and um, you, yeah, this attack, well, I should at least save one of them, <laughs> I feel. Well, currently it's going to be a distraction because from the other side, wow, there was actually greedy deers in there. There's was still one more. <laughs> and, oh wow, oh yeah, there it goes. That's where the tests are coming from. That's the, that's the, uh, that's where the tech uh, of Russia comes from. There's shock troopers, of course. And looks like it just takes a little bit too much resources to kill off this uh, insurgency. So this attack right here is going to do the damage. Uh, there are a couple of very here. So this could be stopped uh, pretty fast if you wanted to. Uh, but the problem is there comes more shock troopers. And this shock troopers looks like it's going to be the end of the game, to be honest. I don't think the axe can kill them off quickly uh, enough. Well, as I say that, the... Uh, the spread attacks uh, of uh, the extra is pretty good, but unfortunately still not enough. Still not enough. These are uh, 60 HP uh, shock troopers, but it doesn't mean that he's going to stop this uh, this anytime soon. It's still coming more out uh, by the minute. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, as here again, Andrew keeps building these heavy tanks, but uh, I don't like to see them alone. I'm more better to do that what he did down here. Coupling them with uh, some infantry. But still, this might do some damage. Uh, well, if it attacks now, it probably won't because there's quite a few rocket soldiers here. It's gonna kill up this. That's okay. Maybe dump that ore and then uh, relocate. No. Oh, that V2! What is it doing? <laughs> no. Oh, you need that V2 against the shock troopers. And uh, yeah, as you can see here. Shock troopers do a lot of damage to heavy armor. And uh can take quick the work of this. Doesn't look like under this lava does uh, have too much more. Well let's go for the attack here. And what's funny about this, this could actually do damage this pretty good amount of uh, flamethrowers and rocket troopers here. So let's see. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's gonna push through here, do some structural damage but the thing is there's just too much stuff around uh, his base uh, that I don't think he can still recover from. Andrew is moving in his uh, harvesters to crush those uh, infantry but it's gonna end up him losing the harvesters eventually. He's kind of passive with the heavy tanks here. Probably just trying to focus on killing of this and uh, forgetting about his uh, additional units. 
This is <laughs> kind of silly game, but yeah, here comes the flank of uh, shock troopers. They doesn't currently have anything to stop them. So yeah, yeah, this this was pretty effective by Andre the Slav, but he uh, as long as he doesn't have any base, then it's not going to matter. Oh wow, that harvester almost got went down. Um, well, yeah, they're quite yeah, So finally comes the harvesters. I mean, excuse me, they have tanks in. And coupled with the shock troopers, there's there's no way in hell this is going down. Yeah, he realizes it himself, saying, Oh man, and he surrenders. Alright, nice game here. Very nice game. So, the uh, Masters Division player beat the uh, Minions Division player. Minions Division. Minions Division player, after all. Okay, good game, yeah, very close. I guess we can just sneak into their discussion here, as this is a uh, private match. However, it was shared publicly by um, by Andre the Slav, I believe. So this was a practice match uh, on Dual Call Front. Uh, of course, uh, one of the maps in the Global League map pool, so definitely something that uh, players want to uh, want to practice on. You yeah, see the discussion a little bit here. Uh, yeah, you know it's uh, very, uh, very impressive by under the slab. You can see the macro. I mean the, uh, yeah, the the production and the expansion and macro in general was a little bit better for Andrew, which made him uh, eventually wear out under the slab. But you know under the slab, he kept coming back and doing this favorable engagement. In fact, if we look at the stats, uh, yeah, you can, well, it's relatively equal. But he did well uh, at least uh, in terms of. Uh, in terms of uh, engagement and uh, taking, get, giving the damage, uh, and then, you know, the counter was actually, you know, it looks like pretty, pretty equal. Uh, so, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, you can see Andrew kind of tops there, but overall, this this looks like an equal graph, and uh, this has to do more uh, with because we saw uh, Andrew was floating like like a madman earlier. Which you know is just going to stop his income or just cap it to a certain degree. So so yeah. Okay, so you do have seen this game. Uh, nice the first catch. This was uh, this was uh, always fun to watch. Now this is uh, I believe it's going to be the first uh, Friday cast on the channel. The first Friday cast is going to be a cast every Friday. You know and you know, the, you know if, if I have something more. If I have something more, you know, maybe I can just pull in some extras. At least for a couple of first weeks. Now how this works is uh, I'm cast I'm I'm just pulling up a replay, I'm casting the game. Now if I found the game to be uh, uninteresting or not yeah, not good in whatever way, I'll just either stop the casting or just discard the game. So so you know sometimes I might just complete the cast but I, then I just find something better and you know I uh, might you know release more casts during week but that's that's pretty accidentally in that case so it's just gonna be Friday streams for now now with all that said uh, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time <laughs>